Hey everybody, coming up on Sports Central, NAIA Athletic Director of the Year, Drew Watson from Southeastern University, Dragon Boat Champion, Fran McCaskill, and from the Lakeland Magic, we have Aaron Hayes. Wow, what a show we have coming up. Stick around everybody for this edition of Sports Central. Everybody, welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, to your left, for those of you that are directionally impaired, Mr. Hank Longo. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great. How are good, you? Just good, uh, good. no rest for the weary right no, now. I'm telling you, just 100 miles an hour. Just keeps on cruising. Overall, how was the water ski uh, championship month last month? It was a uh, it was a great month. Uh, the Southern Regionals up in Tuscaloosa was great, uh, and the national championships was great down in West Palm. Uh, over, gosh, like 750 competitors were there, and Barefoot uh, Nationals will be here next year. Yeah, Barefoot Nationals will be back here, and uh, just things are cruising. It's kind of still moving along, and things have been really busy with you as well. Oh, then. Uh, Absolutely nuts. We don't have a lot of time to talk about that, that's for sure. But we do have somebody we need to thank. Yes, we do. We want to thank the folks at The Ledger for their support. Uh, really appreciate their sponsorship of our first segment here. Absolutely. Well, I always enjoy their pigskin picks. And, uh, wow, a lot of guys took it on the chin. Packers <laughs> lost last night. I think two guys got it right. But, uh, I got it wrong. <laughs> but it is what it is. Well, everybody, we do have some very, very special guests coming up. But number one, right out of the chute, is Drew Watson. He is really the spokesman for uh, Greenfield Village in Detroit. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> he is the athletic director of the year, though. For Where the, did you come up with Greenfield Village? We in went Detroit. to Greenfield Village uh, last week. Okay, we had yeah. some business with the Tigers. It was. Uh, Polk County night, sent, visit Central Florida night, and it, the whole weekend really, and gave away 10,000 of these uh, Hawaiian shirts and with our logo, the Tigers wow. logo. Yeah, yeah nice. it was it was huge. You got a kiosk up there mm -hmm. uh, behind home plate uh, for all the television productions. For I think we we do seven games a year. Wow, so fantastic! Just, yeah, good good visibility. So it was uh, a good time. Anyway, Greenfield Village is probably my favorite place in the whole Detroit metro area to go. It's a 1800s village. The thing's massive. It's mm -hmm. absolutely I've huge. I've been there. I've been there. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're I'm from Michigan. You're from Michigan. Yeah, I got to go there. You know, that was a big thing in school. It was, you know, a, the school trip to Greenfield Village. Well, Drew was mesmerized by Greenfield Village. Yeah, it's it pretty, <laughs> it's yeah. neat stuff. Yeah, it, very, it, really is. it really is. Well, Drew, something I didn't know until recently was you're the Athletic Director of the Year for the uh, NAIA. That's pretty impressive. Just found that out. It's, it's a, an incredible honor. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to, to do the job that I do. And as anyone knows who's been in athletics, it takes an administration, Dr. Ken Engel, our president, our, our leadership team, Dr. Chris Owens, my boss. Uh, they give us the tools to do what we're doing. And then you've got the, that incredible staff, coaches, student athletes, Student athletes are amazing. So it's really an athletic department of the year award if you if you look at it that way. So really proud, proud of all the people that made that happen. Well, that's a lot of teamwork. You know, you have to get everybody, um, you know, working together and, and also understanding it's more than sports. It's yep. sports and education. Yep. You know, the school is the number one thing there. But tell us about some of these impressive athletes you've had that have been doing some wonderful things. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, in 2018 we won the Baseball World Series, uh, our first national championship in school history. Uh, and re really we've, we've got a coaching staff right now who is they're recruiting a lot of high level uh, high level athletes and, and we've got a lot of division one transfers that have started to come to southeastern and the cool thing about about what uh, our coaches are doing is it's we've started to be known as as a healing place there's a lot of kids who go division one it isn't quite what they what they thought it was a bad situation really really lost their love of the sport and uh they they come to us they're they're just haven't had a great experience they're physically and emotionally broken down and uh, God uses Southeastern, our coaches, our student athletes, our staff, to really, really turn that around 180. And and you know, and, and we've seen a lot of kids come in broken and leave leave whole, which is really cool. 
you know, it's great to win, but it's great to be investing in lives too. Maybe we could enroll Hank. <laughs> I feel very whole. Oh. Well, Drew, the uh, football team moving up the ranks. You got some, yeah. as Hank was saying, you got some real talent. And I think the latest poll had you at 15th. 15th in football. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty impressive. You got a couple players of the week out of it too. We did. I mean, we we've been uh, we had a little bit of delay. We've only played two games because of of Dorian and kind of the effects on our university. Yeah. Uh, but you know, and then a, then a bye week. But uh, we start out two and zero. We we drilled Georgetown last Saturday night, uh, that, which moved us from nineteen to fifteen. Georgetown's a three-time national champion in the NAI, mm -hmm. so wow. really fun to fun to do that. Uh, so this uh, tomorrow night we have Campbellsville, uh, but football is is coming out of the gate strong. Our our special teams defense has played well all year. Offense really clicked in last game. So. Uh, we've got, uh, from, from what I've seen and what I've heard from the staff, we've got the most talented team we've had. So as you know, it's, it's, it's getting all that talent to play together. And so it, it, it's going well so far. We're, we're looking to move up the ranks uh, hopefully more this week. Right. Picking off some good talent uh, off the field too. Mike Santani from the Orlando Magic yep. joining your staff a few months ago. And yep. I know he's been a, a big addition there. Um, but back to s the sports side of things, um, golf. Stick and ball sports, you guys, you know, seem to run the gamut there, but place fourth yeah. in, in the nationals. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, all, all across, you know, we were in 12 national tournaments last year. Wow. Uh, there is a, there's, there's really two measures that we use. There's, a, there's the Sun Conference, which is our mm -hmm. conference, and we won the Commissioner's Cup in the Sun Conference for the first time in school history last year. But then nationally, there's the Learfield Cup. Which is is you know when you're ranked when you're Learfield number one you are the best school in the NAI, uh, athletically speaking. So, we have we have gone up the ranks over the last seven years and we were 17th to complete last mm -hmm. year, and so to be top 20 two years in a row in Learfield Cup we're very proud of that. Again proud of the staff and what they're doing. But uh, Southeastern has become a name nationally that that uh, is known and is is really making some some waves and we're really thrilled about that. We've got. Mm -hmm. A lot going on this year, an undefeated men's soccer team so far. Uh, they're 6-0 and 1. They got a big match tomorrow against St. Thomas. So, a lot of great things happening across the board that are re we're really excited about. Our partnership with the Tigers that we just renewed. You know, the, the reason I'm in Michigan with you is because, mm -hmm. you know, we we renewed our deal with the Tigers for three years. Uh, really excited to give our baseball team the chance to play the Detroit Tigers. I mean, that's that's a great piece for us. Great recruiting piece. But also in our partnership, we were able to give a, a master's degree away to, uh, to a, a teacher in Polk County at a Flying Tigers game. You know, and so uh, Susan Carlton was the winner this year, uh, just has gone through and overcome a lot of adversity. But that, those kind of things that we're able to partner with the Tigers just make it, you know, and, and in the community, make it you know, really fun, uh, fun to be here. Well, it's got to be uh, a really uh, enlightening experience for the ball players to get to play with the Tigers, to yeah. just see what, what is the difference, yes. you know, that, you know, what takes you up to that next level to make you a pro ball player yep. and to be out there and actually experience that and to get to play with them. I mean, that's what a treat that's got to be. Yeah, it was great watching them walk into to, uh, uh, the, the field and just like, just wow, you know, it, and it's not a major league ballpark, but it's a, it's a really nice spring training ballpark, you know, and, and they were just in, in awe for the first 20 minutes, half hour. Oh, we got to play. Now we got to play. Yeah. But to but to hit the backfields for batting practice and to meet Alan Trammell and some of the guys that were back there, I mean, it's just just a tremendous opportunity for our, our kids, and we're really really thankful for it. Well, I'm jump back to soccer for a second because um, the women's soccer team. Yeah. Okay, you've got some pretty notable talent on we there, do. and you have a girl from, uh, I believe it's Nigeria. Yes. That uh, actually played for the Nigerian Olympic team. World Cup team, World Cup, World yeah. Cup team that uh, played in France. Tell us a little bit about that. That's, that's kind of a cool story. Yeah, you know, it's she's one of the the, the, the success stories. You now she 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 came to Southeastern. I think when she got to South Southeastern, she's thinking, I'm going to be here for a year or two, then I'm going to follow my D1 dream, and she just fell in love with the school, fell in love with her teammates and the experience, and so you know, you turn on the World Cup over the summer, Nigeria is playing France, you know, and the and they were in the you know in the round of 16. Right. And you see Uchenna Canu, you know, one of our kids, you know, and going. Now she started that game, but the but in the in pool play she was a she was a, a sub for all three. So she's up there to check in, 
You know, you've got you've got the commentators talking about Southeastern and where she's from. Comments from our coach Randy Belly, and then and then you know we get back to school. There she is in our athlete orientation meeting, just sitting there in the back row, just chilling out. She play, you just played in the World Cup. How does that feel? But it's just we're just so proud, so proud of her, and she's she's just a, just such a humble kid. You know, she's she scored a, a, an AI record amount of goals last year, and uh, and just to have that kind of talent who is just so humble, and uh, just going about getting her degree. Mm -hmm. And she'll be done after this year. We're just, we're just really proud. And what is she getting her degree in? You know, I, I don't know. That, okay. That's a, that's a good question. I, I will find out and get back to you on that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You'll do that. We'll, I know. Be, we'll yes. be back with you, folks. Man. No, we'll <laughs> back right after you. this. Hey, goodness. Yeah, yeah. There's that curveball. You were yeah, not thinking thank you for the curveball. Uh, thank you, Hank, very much. <laughs> All our other guests are sitting out there going, "Oh, I hope he doesn't do that to me." <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of mean. It wasn't mean. <laughs> that wasn't mean at all. I just thought I should have known. Yeah, I should have known. She uh, could no, be, just, you know, uh, yeah, no, it's all good. You know, an engineer, or, you know. <laughs> well, you know, we we talked about the you know baseball and football and you know now soccer's. I mean, I mean you take a look at, at globally. Obviously, soccer mm -hmm. is most popular, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, in the United States, not so much. But it is growing significantly. Oh, Other sports. Other sports that you guys are involved in? Any superstars? Uh, volleyball? Yeah, vo I mean volleyball's uh, volleyball's young this year. Okay, okay? but we've got uh, our women's basketball team played for the national championship last year. Had a had a tough loss out out mm -hmm. there to Concordia. We actually host Concordia in a rematch in December. So, uh, but women's basketball lost a whole lot of players, but retooled. They've got a number of Division One transfers, and we're we're really looking forward to that season. Let me ask you one real real quick one that doesn't involve a stick or a ball. Well. Some of it does. Yeah. Um, your track team, young, second yes. year. Yep. Second year, uh, we got Coach Nick Dotson, who was recently uh, inducted into the NAI Hall of Fame yeah, for track. Yeah, I was reading yep. about that. Yeah, he was in the oh. ledger yesterday, and mm -hmm. I mean, he great was, article. Yeah. Yeah, Shorter University. He was he was the first signee at Shorter, uh, and then he brings that. He is an energizer, but he just goes, and so he recruited in his in our first year of having women women's and men's track, we win the Sun Conference Championship in both. It was just a tremendous day. He's doing a great job, but it's just, I'm proud to have those kind of folks in our department. I mean, it's just, we're very blessed. Boy, no. you're just knocking it out in every sport that you're playing. It's fantastic. Well, Drew, appreciate we really, uh, really appreciate you taking time out. Who do you play this weekend in uh, football? We got Campbellsville University in football. Okay, home or away? Home, 7 okay. o'clock. How do people get tickets? People get tickets at seufire.com. seufire.com. Dot com. Yep. If you want tickets, or you can still walk up. I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, still walk up. Okay, yep. fourteen dollars a ticket. They play on Saturday. Saturday night, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. We've also we got women's soccer at twelve, volleyball at two, men's soccer at two thirty, football at seven. All at home. Oh, wow. That's why they call weekend. Sunday a day of rest at uh, Southeastern <laughs> because Absolutely. everybody's beat. <laughs> Anyway, hey, Drew, thanks so much for joining us, and thanks, thanks so much for joining us up in Detroit. That yep. was a, a very productive trip, and, and I'm sure that uh, you learned a lot and enjoyed it as well. I did. Okay. I did. Thank you. Well, everybody, one of the events that uh, Polk County Tourism and Sports Marketing hosts, recruited, um, puts a lot of heads in beds, making a lot of cash registers ring. What's that event? It's called Tough Mudder. A little off the beaten path in terms of its style, but we've got some great footage here. Check it out. Hank and Mark, we'll be back right after this. We've got here on course today about 12 miles, um, running with a lot of features scattered in between. So start line's just over my shoulder here and finish line of the base area. Uh, participants will then enter out into a full 12 mile course with a lot of random mud pits, ditches built, and a lot of cool obstacles. So we've got a lot of our staple obstacles here, Arctic Enema, Everest, Electroshock Therapy, um, and a mystery obstacle, a brand new obstacle that's never been seen before. So there's a mix of some of the, the stuff that people are used to and that it's new, um, as well as some brand new stuff that people have never seen before.
So electric V obstacles, these are, um, these are a staple for a Tough Mudder event. Um, they involve, one involves crawling through a tight watery space with electric wires hanging over you. Um, the really nimble people can slither through without getting shocked. Um, and electroshock therapy is one of our marquee obstacles. It's usually the very last one. It involves a, a sprint to the finish line through an electrified field of wires um, with a few uh, trip hazards in the way, a nice muddy base. So um, some people can, can run through without falling down. Others uh, stumble along the way. Um, either way makes for a good photo. And so those are two of our marquee obstacles. Over the weekend, we'll have nearly 12,000 participants. As well, we'll near have uh, probably about at least 3,000 spectators. So all in all, this weekend, we'll have 15,000 people with us um, enjoying the day. Um, it's, been, it's been a great event so far, and it'll continue through tomorrow. So Polk County, it's a great place for us. It's centrally located in Florida. So we, we're drawing from a lot of the, the major cities, Tampa to the, to the west and Orlando to the north. Westgate River Ranch is nice. It's a nice big property. Lots of open fields for us to work with. A lot of natural water features, um, mud pits, um, as well as just open land, places that we can build our obstacles and we can weave a 12 mile course in. So it gives us a nice mix. We got a lot of shade actually on this course, which can be rare at times. Um, so we've got a combination of running out in the sun, some shaded areas, natural water and ditches, lots of great build sites for obstacles. It's a prime location to have an event, especially of this size. Um, so it's, it's really working out great. Everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. If you're just joining us, shame on you. To my right, Mr. Hank Longo, and I'm Mark Jackson. Thanks so much for joining us. Wow, what a great, uh, what a great little feature that was on Tough Mudder. That's uh, insane. Yeah, some tough stuff, boy. Oh my I tell goodness you, you gracious! You got to be in some great shape. And hey, we want to thank the Trophy Shop for being our segment sponsor here on segment number two on Sports Central. Well, there's an event that I have to admit I didn't know a whole lot about, or a sport that I didn't know a whole lot about. You know, we've all watched the uh, uh, canoe kayak in the Olympics. We've mm -hmm. watched uh, the rowing events, the uh, and then the cardboard boat races that they have over at <laughs> the, milk, the milk carton race or yeah. whatever it well, is. Well, this is more on the world class elite stage, okay. okay, if you will. The event or the sport it's called dragon boat racing. This is really cool. It started in China. Um, like a bazillion years ago, I can't mm -hmm. remember what it was, and they were using teak boats and all this type of stuff. But you don't want to listen to me. We've got an expert here that's going to tell us all about dragon boat racing. She is a world-class champion, and believe it or not, she's from right here in Polk County, at least with the Board of County Commissioners. Yeah, absolutely. So. Miss Fran McCaskill, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really do appreciate it. Well, it's... Uh, you know, I was doing a little bit, and I rarely do that, but um, I didn't know a whole lot about dragon boat racing. Mm -hmm. So I got my information about originating in China and, and all of this type of stuff. The organization, the International Federation, has been around since 1991. Amazing. And the U.S. was one of the founding countries, along with China, I think France and mm -hmm. maybe Belgium and some others. But it's really a cool sport. But you're the expert. You're the world-class athlete. You tell us. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> you tell us about, about dragon boat racing. What, what's the objective? And you know, how many people? Is it one? Is it 101 that participate? Well, there are going to be some photos to put up in a little bit. But basically, it's a, um, a standard boat. It's a very long canoe. It's around 46 feet long, mm -hmm. three and a half feet in the middle. Look at the tapers um, mm -hmm. towards, the, towards both ends. There are, in a standard boat, there's 20 paddlers, and you sit next to someone. So you either you paddle left or you paddle right, and um, there is a drummer that sits up front. Mm -hmm. uh, a drummer? The, the yeah, drummer a that drummer. actually, uh, you'll, you should see that. Um, it's a big drum. They sit um, perched up a little, and they literally will drum, and you'll see the whole boat um, keep time with that. 
so you're all entering the water at the same time with your paddles and you're all exiting at the same time, we should be anyways. <laughs> and in the back there's a steers person, so they're stand, um, standing in the back and they have a very long oar. Um, so uh, pretty much uh, that's it and um, a standard dragon boat weighs around six, 600 pounds, give Ooh. or take a little bit. So when you put 20 people in there, plus a drummer and a steers person, you're looking at almost 4,000 pounds. And when you race, uh, races vary from 200 meter, 500 meter, and one of my favorites is a 2,000. Um, so um, for the 200 meter and the 500 meter, those are done, uh, they start um, from a dead stop. So you're in the water, not moving, perfectly lined up. And, um, and then you, you just start. go straight uh, for yeah, that long. Yes, that's so the it. So now the 200 meter, that's that's more of a sprint, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, so it's um, versus the well, when you're talking, what is it, a thousand meters? You said two thousand. Yeah, there are some thousand meter races as yeah. well. The standard is about 200, 500, and two thousand. And two thousand. Yeah. So you're you're they're going over a mile. Yeah, it's it's. Like, it's, a, it's fun. Yeah, so you got a, everything from a sprint to a marathon. Mm -hmm. So kind of different body types too, you know, pe different uh, fast twitch, slow twitch, yes. you know, all of that type of, you know, all that well, stuff. Well, they, the, they had dragon boat races at Lake Silver a couple of years ago. They did? Okay. And uh, yeah, they did. I did, a, I did a segment on it actually. Small and, world. Um, it's You're a man well boats, traveled. Man. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And. Um, they have like the dragon head on the boats yeah. and the drummer up there, which is really cool to, to listen to them beat the drum because you hear it from all the d boats, you know, every boat has a drummer. So you hear all this drumming going on while you're out there racing. But it also um, is neat to see how that's so important, as you said, is keeping everybody in the same rhythm. I would think that's got to be the biggest key is that everybody's working together and, you know, people don't get out of whack as far as, you know, your rowing is concerned. Absolutely. Fran, you, you were, I'm sorry, you were a um, member of the U.S. team and it's the United States Dragon Boat Federation, right? Yes. And it's the International Dragon Boat Federation. That's their world championships. Correct. Okay. So representing the United States, you go over there, and trip to Thailand takes a long, long time. You yes. Know? It does. So you've got, you've got all <laughs> of that long. stress. <laughs> but then you get to the water, and the nerves, the butterflies started to kick in. What were you feeling? before you got out in the race? Well, one of the things um, I really enjoy about this sport is that it is a team sport. So, um, you know, when, when you paddle, it's your team. It's a, an incredible amount of trust and respect for your fellow paddle mates. Um, oh, nice. So um, the energy is very positive. Um, uh, I, I would say a little bit of a little bit of nerves, but it was just really just wanting to get out there and paddle. Yeah, once you get um, paddled, we have kind trained of very hard um, for months to, to that point, um, and just really wanted to get out there and just show the world what USA could do. Um, and so very the fortunate that you have there yes, with you. Yes, um, the boat I was on, um, I was on a small boat, so that was a ten-person boat as opposed to the twenty. The, okay. the team that I was on, it was a all-women's boat, so I was on small boat um, senior women B. And we were very um, lucky. Um, I wouldn't say it was not luck, it was everything that we did to get there. But we uh, won two bronze medals. So um, it was amazing. It was just absolutely amazing to be there. Um, we were with all the other Team USA folks. Um, it was just great to just cheer everyone on. The other countries were amazing. It was fabulous. How do you? Well, here's a, you know, some of the results up here had the. Uh, the Aussies winning, and then uh, Germany, United States, Great Britain, New Zealand, and Singapore. I mean, that's that's, that's uh, some great I stuff. mean, that's really truly an international event. Yes. I mean, it isn't There's like a uh, of American football where they're you know playing Canada and you know a few other places. But oh, there's there's some really cool shots here of some of the team holding up the U.S. flag and. How do you get that's the boat? Team. That's that's How do you get boat? the boat our, over our there? No. Um, they. <laughs> that's a. Uh, um, that's one of my favorite pictures right there. That's us coming around the corner on our last uh, last 500 of the 2000. But the, the organizations that put these on, no matter where you go, if it's in Tampa, Orlando, Vancouver, doesn't matter um, what state you're in, the organization that puts on the events will bring the boats in. Um, if you probably don't know what a dragon boat looks like, you're probably not paying attention to it, <laughs> but you probably have been on 75 or I-4, and there's been, you know, a truck just hauling them. 
um, yeah. taking them uh, for this part for the United States a lot of them come out of Canada um, so they bring them in for the event and then they take them they take them back Wow so you don't yeah. have to worry about getting like um, I paddle for the Tampa Bay Dragon Ball Club um, so I have to get that in there. Yeah. Uh, it's a great <laughs> club. Um, now there's one in Orlando too. Um, there's one. There's a race that's coming up in Orlando, actually okay. next month in October. Mm -hmm. I believe it's October 17th, and it's going to be over on Turkey Lake. So if anyone's around and you're in this area, it's come over. It's watch. amazing. Yeah, it's just a it's lot on, of fun. It's on Turkey Lake, yes. right off of Sand Lake. I'm not sure about that, but I know it's right over there, oh, um, yeah. well, right over you, in that area. Well, if you, if you, you Googled Orlando Dragon Boat Races October 2019, it'll come up. <laughs> so how did you get involved in this? That is a good question. I get it a lot. So I have this friend, Virginia Ramirez, and about nine, ten years ago, she came up to my husband and I and said, hey, Tampa Bay Club Sports putting on some events, Dragon Boating, six Saturday, one Saturday, you know, six Saturday practices, and then there's this big race. We're like, sure, why not? What else are we doing on Saturday morning? <laughs> Didn't even know what a dragon boat looked like. And we showed up at the time. Uh, the practices were behind the Marriott in downtown Tampa on the, on oh, yeah. the Hillsborough River. Yep. And lo and behold, um, after the first time I got in that boat, I was, I was addicted. Oh. Um, so it's ever since then, um, joined uh, Tampa Bay Dragon Boat Club after that. Uh, the Tampa area has quite a few uh, dragon boat clubs actually from it's one of the fastest growing water sports in the country um, there's quite a few in tampa sarasota anna maria mm -hmm. island um, hernando it's it's pretty much prevalent everywhere now did your husband go with you over to thailand yes he did so he was a trooper <laughs> now, he races too though right um he has paddled in the past he's not actively paddling right now oh, okay. um, but he was very supportive during during the process i I, have I mean he had to be proud maybe a little oh. jealousy too <laughs> yes <laughs> so, <laughs> i'm sure you got to go to it. tampa to to practice to train is that to the club is that well i paddle with the tampa bay dragon boat club so we practice three days a week um, oh, wow. you can look us up at tbdbc.com i'd um, okay. love to have you come down and try it out um, uh, so that's fun. our club um, practicing for team usa they had their own um, tryouts and they have their own camp so you know in addition to um, paddling with the club um, you know we traveled around they um, there were 130 women that tried out for Senior B, and yeah. I was fortunate enough uh, to make uh, the 33 that they chose. That's fantastic. Go. It's got to be amazing. a good workout on top oh, of it. Oh, it is. And Coach Allen for Team USA was, you know, she's fabulous. You, you know what division you would paddle in? Oh. <laughs> Seriously, I, no, I, I was senior men Z. No, it's <laughs> over 60 is mm -hmm. the great grand dragon paddlers. The great grand, grand dragon paddlers. paddlers. That's, 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 that's what you'd very, compete in. That'd be, well, I think you'd be in the same group, pal. Oh, <laughs> I'd be in the 50s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that Pinocchio noise is coming out. Oh, that's amazing. You had to just bring that up, though, didn't you? That you just could not get away. <laughs> I just couldn't help me. myself, you know. I'm <laughs> well, friend, the, the organization, the uh, governing body, you know, a lot of people don't know, you know, what is a governing body? What does that do? Well, the U.S. Olympic Committee has all sorts of different governing bodies in, in different sports, and some sports that may not be part of the USOC family, there's, there's still a very structured organization domestically here as well as internationally. But in the United States, if I'm not mistaken, Dragon Boat Racing, the, organiza the Federation, actually got started in Iowa. Is that correct? That I do not know. Okay. Um, I am going to look into that, though. Okay. Right? You see, you see, and, and again, I'll get back with you, you just, like back before, with just like before, just like for the first time. Had to throw that yeah. curveball. <laughs> that was mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't good. you? I, I told you, friend, I wouldn't do that. No. I no. You kept your word. <laughs> I kept my word. <laughs> well, okay, no, smarty no, pants, no, go no. right ahead. No. <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> well, friend, you know you're looking to the future. This event that uh, mm -hmm. you got the bronze medals in, takes place every two years. Yes. But between that, in the odd years, but then the even years, there's like another type of, of event or world event, isn't there? Is that something that you get involved in or? Um, I believe the name, it's the, it's the Canoe IC. I, I, I do know the acronym, I just can't think of it right now. So there are two um, Dragon Boat associations. Oh, there um, are? Yeah, so that, that's the other one that happens in, oh, okay. in the other year. Okay, so the, the, this, this event, 
I, I guess where I was going with this long dissertation here was the fact that it's coming back up in two years. Yes, it is. And? That's in Hong Kong, and yes, I will continue to train to um, hopefully make the team again. Okay. Um, that's fantastic. Well, let's talk about that for a second, because you and I, you know, both big into training and, you know, all this type of stuff. Um, how do you train? That's I mean, what I was it's, just it's ask, obviously, yeah. you know, like a canoe stroke, correct? It, it's similar to a canoe stroke, um, a little bit more aggressive, yeah. I, I think. Um, a lot so, more um, you just get, we, our coach is amazing, Jonathan. He's mm -hmm. from the Tampa Bay Dragon Ball Club, and there's other, you know, really great teams that are around. So we practice three days a week. Um, for us, most teams usually are around the same thing at a three days a three day a week schedule. And okay. you go out for about an hour. Um, they do drills, technique, um, and also to augment that, you do off water training. So yeah. a lot of strength training um, as well in between. To, That's what uh, I was wondering is what that. you did to well, she, yeah, she's mm -hmm. doing the marathon of them all. So yeah. you probably have to do a little endurance yeah. training too. You know, so, that's pretty impressive. Well, right here, you know, can you believe it? Right here in Polk County, we've got a, we've got a world-class champion in dragon boat racing. Excellent. That was awesome. That was fantastic. Fran, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. It was enlightening, and we're looking forward to having you back on if you get stuff. another, uh, if you get into another race and see how you do. And I'm Sounds sure you're, like a you're plan. going to be fantastic. <laughs> okay, thank well, you. Thank you, Fran. Great stuff. Well, everybody, we've got, we're just jam-packed today, and we've got a uh, just a been really blessed to have some really talented people, but we also have some really talented people behind the camera in the production studio. And one of the things that uh, they do for PGTV and for all of us that here in Polk County is they go out and film some of these really cool events that are going on. We have some special footage from the Mid-Florida Auto Show and the Lake Mere Classic. It is, I mean, this is a, a like a world, event. yeah, it's a world-class auto event that takes place. Cars that are worth millions of dollars. Oh, it's it's just Ford Haycock fantastic. is the one that started it. Yeah and uh, partnered up with Tourism and Sports Marketing because it was only a one-day event. Said, no, we got to make this a three-day event. And sure enough, that happened. It's but grown, uh, yeah. pumping hundreds of thousands of dollars into this community. But you get a chance to see it up close and personal. Check it out, everybody. Hank and Mark, we'll be back right after this.
everybody, and welcome back to Sports Central. Mark Jackson along with Hank Longo in another fantastic segment with Fran McCaskill. Yeah. That dragon boat racing is cool. Oh, it's fascinating. But, and to uh, hear her story and, you know, to travel, what, around the world to go to Taiwan and compete, just amazing. What an experience that had to be. Well, that, I mean, you look at the training, you know, there's got to be some, some real natural skills there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you just don't go out and and compete if you're not a world-class athlete. You know, yeah. that is just absolute, to me, it was just absolutely amazing. Yeah. So good for her. Congratulations. And, uh, well deserved. Here we go. Segment absolutely. number three, and we want to thank uh, Balmoral Resort for their supporting us on this third segment. Of you Sports been out there Central. recently? No, I haven't. Oh, it's unbelievable. Really doing oh, a Garrett nice Kenny job is just, out there. Oh, and they've got the uh, turf field down now for their uh, stadium field. I mean, this is really, really something. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he's doing a great job. And, Good. Uh, Mike Botkin is, uh, you know, their director of sports out there. So, yep, you got to check good. it out. Good, yeah. good, good. And they have a splash park, kind of a water yeah, a I've pool seen and that. everything. It's, it's and gorgeous. Great for families. Yeah. You know, vacation rental homes and all that type of thing. Anyway, wow. There we go. Some more action, but on the hardwood. And that is basketball. Our very own Lakeland Magic. Um, wow, making it to the playoffs last year. And we have a very special guest, Miss Erin Hayes. I called her Emily when I first met her. For some reason, I had it in my head. Aaron's name was Emily. Dementia is a horrible thing, Hank. Yeah, I'm you. Yeah, I feel sorry for you, there, yeah. buddy. I hope we make it through the show, and you remember it's who he is by the time we get to the end. Yeah. Here. Well, Aaron, welcome aboard. So, so uh, glad to have you. You actually have been with the Lakeland Magic for two years. Mm -hmm. You came from the Orlando Magic. That had to be a switch. Wow. Yeah, so it was... Um, a big change, but very happy to be in Polk County and was very excited to start Lakeland Magic with our president, Shelly Wilkes, and we've loved it here ever since, so we're really excited about season three, and hopefully we can go all the way this time and make it to the finals. Now, Shelly's back from maternity, right? She is, yep. Shelly's back. And, and where, did, where did you originally come from? I'm actually from Michigan, so made my way down. Have you ever been to Greenfield Village? Oh, you know? <laughs> I have. I did the school trip to Greenfield Village. It's awesome, all isn't about it? it? Yeah. I don't remember much, but from when I did go, Are it's pretty cool. Are you from Detroit cool. then, or Dearborn? Just north, so Rochester Hills. Oh, okay. I actually well, live that's right kind of next fancy to, pants area. Yeah, right by the palace where the Pistons used to play. Yeah, yeah. okay. And yeah. not far from where I grew up. Well, I thought you grew up further north. No, I grew up in in Waterford, which is just you know 45 yeah. miles north yeah. of Detroit, but probably maybe 15 miles to Rochester, something like that. We used to race against them. I was, we were talking, and back in high school, um, you know, snow ski racing was a big deal, and um, we raced against Rochester. I remember that very well. Yeah. There you go. A lot of good Small stories world. going back to those <laughs> days. Well, how'd you make it down to Florida? Uh, so I actually started working for the Orlando Magic, and that's what brought me here and fell in love and didn't want to go back to winter, so I stayed. That's been cool. been here ever since. Okay. Fantastic. So how did you find out about the Orlando Magic to move from Michigan down here? Um, honestly, good luck, I think. Um, I was working in college football and really wanted to switch back to basketball, wanted to be in the NBA, and in game presentation, the Orlando Magic are world class, so tried to get my way in any way I could. That's fantastic. Yeah. Work your way up. Yeah. Hard work, right? Yeah, that's what does it. That's yeah. what they say. Well, there's a lot of people that question the work ethic of the millennials, but obviously it's working for you. Yeah. It sure is. Yeah, good stuff. Well, let's talk a little bit uh, about the magic. You've got a 5K coming up. We do. Um, so next Saturday, October 5th, it is at RP Finding Center and around Lake Beulah. And you do finish center court. Um, so you get to kind of be on the court, which is always fun. and. We'll have medals and prizing for everyone, and it's just a really good time and good community thing. Well, that's fantastic. And um, what about this tryout for the Magic? That's kind of got that's me a, that's very just intrigues curious. him. He wants to try out uh, so yeah, bad. Try out There's the still magic. spots, so anybody can try out. Um, but yeah, it's this weekend, so Saturday in Auburndale and Sunday in Orlando. Um, but we look to get local talent, maybe talent we didn't necessarily know or see before. Um, it actually worked out pretty great last year. Jeremiah Hill, he came to local player tryouts in the Polk County um, tryout, and he did really well. We invited him to day two in Orlando, um, and we said, this guy's pretty good. Let's keep him around. So we invited him to training camp, made the team. He was kind of a bench player, didn't really play much, 
Um, and then one day came out and scored 30 points, and we're like, we should probably play him more. <laughs> um, and became a backup point guard. Wow. Got invited to Summer League this summer with the Orlando Magic, wow. and now plays overseas in Kazakhstan. So it works, it's a great process. We see talent, there's so much talent all around the world that we don't necessarily get to see all the time, and there's only so many scouts. So this is a great way for them to all come in one place. So, so this is a big deal for if, if you're a baller and you really yeah. you know, can play the game and you oh, yeah. feel that you could be in the big league, but no one's ever really, the people that you've needed to see your talent haven't seen it, and you know here's your shot at, well, here, check this out, and that's fantastic. Yeah, it's really great. and. I mean, we go to a lot of the big schools and a lot of the big cities, but some of those smaller areas you don't necessarily get seen as often. So mm -hmm. this is just a great way. Every team does it in the G League. Um, so people will try out for multiple teams and try to make it and fill the spots of whatever that team needs that year. We needed a point guard, so we got a point guard. Well, we're on that subject with the tryouts and all. If somebody, one of our viewers out there says, hey, I've got a kid that's really good or, you know, I think I'm kind of a stud. You know, I'd like to try out. How, how do they go about doing that? I mean, how do they get, because it's coming up this weekend. Well, t starts tomorrow in Auburndale. Yep. And then Sunday it goes to Orlando, right? Correct. So do they, I mean, call, you know, 1-800-BASKETBALL? I mean, what, <laughs> what do they do? So online registration is actually closed, but um, you can walk up. So tomorrow at 8 a.m. at the Auburndale Community Center, um, you'll fill out all the paperwork on site, and you'll be able to try out in front of the coaches. You do have to pick one or the other. You don't have to go to both. They're both the same, just different locations, mm -hmm. trying to reach more people. But you can just show up, and we'll invite you in. Cool. Now, is there a cost to this for them to be involved? There is a cost. I believe it's $200 to try out, um, and this bunch of paperwork as well. Okay. Well, i got something new coming up, Hank, and uh, I was just in the new... Winter Haven Fieldhouse mm -hmm. this week to see how the progress, you know, and I'll stop by there, try to regularly, but wow, have they come a long way. How do you feel about that? I mean, we are very excited, um, especially to have our own practice facility. Um, right now we travel around and practice all over Polk County, right. so it's great to have a place where we can go and practice. Um, it will have some of our branding in there, which is always great to be out in the Winter Haven community. Um, I know our guys are really looking forward to it. It was a huge selling point to get a lot of the players that we have yeah. back to Polk County. Well, it's, um, you know, when I was in there, the, the south end of the building is, uh, there's, there's one course specifically for the Magic, and then they have their locker rooms, they have their offices, they have all of this stuff, I mean, right there, and then the colors are even themed in that part of the building um, to go along with the Magic's blue color. And it's blue, right? It's yep. not, I mean, I don't know my colors. <laughs> I, I need granimals to match my clothes. So. <laughs> yes, it is blue. <laughs> I'm leaving that one alone. <laughs> can't imagine what his closet looks like with all those little granimals. <laughs> Where are me today? Where are me today? Match the giraffe to the giraffe, you know, whatever it is. So yeah. that's, anyway, but back to the Winter Haven facility. I think uh, that is going to be a, a match made in heaven, if you will, because the facility is sec it will be second to none. Um, the location, the visibility, you know, I mean, it's, this is nice. So you, the team's got to be excited about that. Yeah, we're extremely excited, um, itching to get in there. I know we're just excited to be playing again um, yeah. coming up. So, yeah, we're very excited about Long Winter summer, Haven. isn't it? It's very long off season. Yeah. Well, now you, you're, you do a lot of uh, game day operations, too. I mean, that's part of your title. Yes. What does that mean for us commoners? Yeah, so I do all entertainment on court as well as on the video boards. And then anytime you watch us on TV or Facebook Live, I'm mm -hmm. directing um, the shows, the commercials, anything you're seeing there is coming mm. from our end. We actually produce our own show. Okay. Wow, um, so that's coming cool. from my side, and I have a bunch of staff that helps me and makes it all possible. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Now, now how about the, uh, when you go, you've got you know, all the entertainment and all that. That's all part of it, too? Yeah, so we um, plan all the stuff with the mascot, all the things that happen on court, the contests that fans participate in, our family zone for the kids, um, anything happening on the concourse. We have a VIP lounge um, for food and beverage for our suite holders and courtside seat holders. Yeah. All of that goes into um, planning this games every 24 of them. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of little 
a lot of moving things, pieces. A lot of moving parts out yeah. there, definitely. And then um, what about $2 Tuesdays? Yeah, so $2 Tuesdays are back. Um, tickets are $2, beer, soda, and hot dogs Wait, are all $2. Beer is $2? Oh, is $2. my $2. gosh. For 10 bucks, you can have a black. <laughs> <laughs> you better, you better know it. He, he couldn't <laughs> wait till they got Thirsty Thursdays back at the Tigers. Game. Now he's got a $2 Tuesday. I oh like it. Oh, my gosh. That is Tuesdays with the Magic, Thursdays with the Tigers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's part of your training. Thirsty Thursdays and <laughs> $2 Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Maybe I'll throw some tacos in there. Boy, two, yeah. two tacos for two bucks. They might. We might. Now that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad Taco idea. Taco Tuesday. Tell me, you won't even try. Yeah. Taco <laughs> Tuesday. I'll talk to I'll talk to Aaron about that. I know the person I need to get a hold of on that one for you. Yeah. <laughs> Love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So Aaron coming up the you know the season is obviously uh, just around the corner. People want to get tickets. They want to get because the environment I'm, I'm telling you when you go to these games, it's really, really entertaining. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is so much fun. It's family friendly. Um, it's affordable. And it's just fun. It's just and a great, great time. you're watching great basketball. I mean, these you're watching the best well, you, basketball players. You'll see a guy happen. playing in Lakeland one night. Like and the Orlando, one guy. Yeah, went you know, from Lakeland one night, then to Orlando he, the next And night. he was guarding um, LeBron James. You know, I, wow, what a shocker that is. Where can they go get tickets? Where can people go get tickets? Um, so tickets are on sale, lakelandmagic.com. Um, we're doing single game tickets, season tickets. We have a pricing for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, starts at just $10, so we'd love to have everybody there. And that's our goal is to just bring Polk County together. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons, you, know, wow. you probably don't know this, or, but one of the reasons that the Magic are training in Winter Haven, this is a Polk County team, mm -hmm. you know, the Lakeland Magic, but um, was to get Winter Haven energized, you mm -hmm. know, get Haines City energized, It's and it's working. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot in all the communities in Polk County. Okay, well, Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Um, wow, tryouts tomorrow, the 28th, and then, <laughs> yep. and then on Bam. Sunday. Yeah, and then on Sunday. Nothing but net. So nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. Okay. Then Sunday the 29th in Orlando. Correct. Fantastic. Once again, thank you. Say thank hi to Shelly for us. We will. And uh, tell her we're glad she is back. And uh, she's, she's a delight Great. to be yeah, around. We oh, she's fantastic. Always a treat yeah. to have her on the yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody, a young lady by the name of Tori Osley, and I'm 99% sure I pronounced her last name correct. She's a volleyball star at Bartow High School. And, uh, you know, these up close and personal, that's really what I like. You yeah, know, they're and, neat stories. You know, I just, I really like to see what these kids are all about, what they're thinking. This is a high school kid that's obviously excelling, doing really well in volleyball. That's why she's on up, well, we haven't branded that yet. Our up spotlight. close and personal, our spotlight. There you go. Check it out, Hank and Mark. We'll be back. Segment number four, right after this. I'm Tori, I'm Libero, and I've been playing since a freshman for Bartow High School. I think I chose Libero because um, it's one of the leader roles on the team. My first memory of playing volleyball, my sisters were playing, so I decided to try out my freshman year, and my whole family was surprised to know that I made JV my freshman year. It was scary because it was a new sport, but the girls are really welcoming, and it's a good sport to play, make new friends. I think I stuck with volleyball because it's a very good program at Bartow, and the, the girls are a good group of girls. You have to have extremely good attitude, always going 100%, and you have to try hard for every ball, don't ever let the ball die, and you have to keep your team alive. My coaches will tell me exactly what I need to work on. They won't go easy on you. They'll make sure that you're getting the best work you need. As a team, we're more like sisters. We're really close, and you want to have a good bond because the better bond you have, the better you play together. Um, as a team, we'll get in slums sometimes, so it's just hard to get out of those, and you have to like put your mind in the right set to get out. I think my favorite memory is making friends and going to regionals. 
Well, with volleyball, you have to have a good attitude, so it kind of just like carries with you that day. You have to have good grades to play sports, so it pushes me in school. There's been times where you get frustrated within yourself, but you have to overcome it, and your team helps a lot with that. As a team, you have to know, well, you get to know each other as a team, so you know where everyone's at, and you just stay communicating, you have to focus on what you're doing. I think my favorite aspect of the game is when the game gets close and you just feel that rush and you know you have to like keep pushing and you have to fight for every ball. After I graduate high school, I'd like to go to the College of Georgia Coastal and I would like to play volleyball there if possible. Hey everybody, and welcome back. Certainly hope you enjoyed it. That volleyball is just a cool sport. It is. You know, it's an Olympic sport too. Yeah. So, yeah. It's and it's you know great popularity. To see you're doing so well at it. Well, you, you wait and see at uh, the new Winter Haven Fieldhouse and Conference Center. Twelve volleyball courts in there. So there's going to be some been, major volleyball here in Winter Haven. Yeah, I live in Winter Haven, so we, well, we both do. And driving by and seeing uh, this new facility, you know, coming together, it's just mammoth. And Wait till you get inside it. It's just phenomenal. You know, it, it's um, it's going to really be a spark plug in our community, and to be able to well, have uh, these uh, pro basketball players right here in our backyard, just sensational. Oh, you know, they have the magic here. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh! But yeah. before we get going with our fourth segment, I have to thank the folks at Hampton Inn Lakeside Village for their supporting us on Sports Central here in our fourth segment. Yep. Great reviews about that property, and you know, of course, it's right next to uh, Lakeside Village. Great shopping, great food, beverage, um, pretty much whatever you want. Yeah, that's you know. a, just a, one of the jewels in our community is yeah. in that neck of the woods there. At the I think the only thing they don't have is a hospital and a funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, we got all kinds of good stuff coming up here in Polk County and uh, kind of get you going with the Florida Runners uh, Invitational, huge cross country event. Starts at one o'clock today, which is today is Friday. Um, if you're catching us live, you know that, but yeah. if you're catching a, a rear, you don't. So anyway, at one o'clock today, according to Sam Baker, the uh, Florida Runners Club 20th anniversary, you know the guy that started that was a former intern of Polk County Sports Marketing? Who? I have to uh, look. Here, here comes the dementia. <laughs> we knew this was going to happen sooner or later. Wow. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's in a great kid, I'm too. sorry for throwing that curveball at you, pal. Well, Fran got it. I got it. And uh, Drew got it. <laughs> Drew got it. Aaron, Aaron made it out alive. And I'm sure I, well, I got it with uh, being in the Golden Knight dragon, dragon, dragon thing. <laughs> Whatever. Well, anyway, the Florida Runners Club is out at Holloway. Park, which is just off the parkway and uh, well, it's just north of the parkway. Just north of the parkway. Yeah, and uh, wow, this is this is a massive event. Four thousand five hundred runners, and then you add to that, you know, usually a parent or two, and then yeah. brothers and sisters and uh, grandmas and grandpas, and it's just it's, just a packed it's house. Nuts. It's it's absolutely crazy. It starts at one o'clock today, and uh, the gates open, and then tomorrow. Um, I believe it starts at seven o'clock. I think I think our director here has just fallen asleep. Mm. Poor, poor, oh, <laughs> poor Sam. Now you see, you got the curveball now. Yeah, everybody's getting everybody's hammered getting hammered today. today. Yeah, it's Ford Central. <laughs> anyway, it's it's middle schoolers, co uh, high schoolers, and uh, of course, uh, college. College. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just huge. Biggest cross country event in the southeast United States. 4,500 people. Well, World Sports League, the Plex, uh, men's and women's slow pitch softball. Oh, that's that's, so that's often going to be a big event. Yeah, slow pitch softball, uh, 30 men's and women's teams uh, pack in Polk County once again. That's September, or that's this weekend. It starts today and goes Saturday and Sunday. So that, that's big. It's playing at the Diamond Plex in, uh, in Winter Haven. And then the tryouts. 
tryouts for the uh, going Lakeland on Magic. for the Lakeland Magic, and boy, what a neat experience that could be for some young kid that just can play ball and no one's picked him up, you know. And yeah. here's his opportunity to go to the big league, and we hope that does work out for somebody. And another big event going on. This is a really cool event that they're doing. It's Cypress Gardens Water Ski Team Adaptive Water Ski Event, and it's for the sixth year over on Lake Silver and the whole crew that, you know, volunteers their time to help these folks that are, you know, disabled and uh, working in conjunction with On the Edge Children's Foundation, which is uh, a group of folks that um, spend a lot of time and effort trying to help these people with, you know, disabilities get involved in the sport. You know, the thing is, there's really a misunderstanding about adaptive sports and, uh, you know, it, it can be a physical disability, it can be a cognitive disability, but 19% of the U.S. population have some form of disability, 19%. And I, I do know that Polk County Sports Marketing is really getting into the adaptive uh, arena, no pun intended, mm -hmm. but in all sorts of different sports. But the one where there's a competitive edge for Polk County is in the sport of water skiing, Water ski capital of the, the world, world yeah. certainly makes a and heck Lake of a Silver lot of sense. Lake Silver is a great venue to do this, and of course, got to give a shout out to the folks that are helping this: the World Barefoot Center, Florida Southern College, Weber College, the local Rotary clubs, uh, and yay, notorious crew of the Peg Leg Pirates, a Gasparilla crew that's coming well, they to focus help out as well. Yeah, the crew they uh, um, do a lot for for adaptive athletes mm -hmm. or amputees individuals and yeah it's really really something so it's open to uh, kids six and up uh, check out the cypress gardens water ski team and you can get more information about uh, checking the you know getting involved in the adaptive uh, water skis uh, event that they're holding uh, tomorrow september 28th uh, starts at 9 a.m at lake silver great great opportunity for people great. to get involved yeah, it Absolutely. really is well, the Lakeland Magic 5K, we talked with Aaron about that one, and uh, man, you get a chance to, you know, you end up the whole run right there on the hardwood Center in the Lakeland Court, Center. Yeah. It, have you been in there lately? No, I haven't. Oh, that Lakeland Center is phenomenal. I mean, well, I have been in there. Yes, I have, and ha seen how they've remodeled everything oh, and repainted everything. Just, fin just finishing the final job. touches now, yeah. you know, so the punch list and so, some of those other things. This first class, this world class facility, it really is, it's, it's fantastic. Well, here's an event that I am not going to pat myself on the back, but I was in Italy one time. I think it was in Florence. I was just walking down the street, and then all of a sudden, these, all this stuff was on the street, on the sidewalk and everything. These people were drawing, I mean, just amazing stuff with chalk. And, I mean, this thing was massive. It just went for blocks. And so it was really, really cool. And uh, Bartow, I talked to... Uh, Trish Pfeiffer in Bartow. Jumped right oh, on it. And jumped right on it. it and started it. That's coming up October 5th through to the 6th in Bartow. Check that out. Well, Hank, we've got some people to thank. We've got all kinds of people to thank. Couldn't do it without them. Office Furniture Depot, Abuelos, Cypress Lanes, Hampton in Bartow, Hollywood Signs, and Window Tinting in Bartow. Thank you all so oh, much, they, everybody. Great corporate citizens and do a lot for uh, the community. Well, don't forget, everybody, we have a sister show on 1430 WLKF or 96. Point seven, in uh, as part of the Hall Communications Group and Sports Central, Thursday night from five to six. One of the top rated, believe it or not, is one of the top rated mm -hmm. radio in the top shows. five in a thirty-two station market. So that's it's fantastic. really, really a, a popular show. But that's our sister show, Hank and Mark. The guys that do the radio, they don't really, they have faces for radio. Yeah. So oh, that's boy. <laughs> Here, You knew someone else was getting it before this show ended. All righty. And we, of course, Sam's one of those faces that's on the radio. Yeah, Sam show, Baker, make sure you hey, tune you in can, on Thursdays. Well, can, everybody, our next, our next live show will be October 11th. Make sure you join us for that. This is Mark Jackson for the entire crew at PGTV and Mayan Nelson, along with my co-host, Mr. Hank Longo, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.